All of these images were edited on a laptop with 8 gigs of VRAM using Flux Context Dev, the latest AI text to edit model. Locally on Comfy UI, no cloud, no fees. Make quick, precise edits directly with your prompt. Yes, it runs smoothly, even on a 4060 laptop GPU, and setup takes less than 10 minutes. I'll show you the tricks to get it to work and walk you through it step by step. Let's get into it. All right, the first step is to download all the models. All the links will be provided in the video description. Because I have 8 gigs of VRAM, I'm going to be using one of the GGUF models for context depth. You can find this on the Quantstack Hugging Face page. Generally, you want to pick a model that's within 2 gigs of your, of your VRAM. So really, I've been using the Q6 and the Q5 um, to do the testing with. Q6 is the one that I settled on, but you can grab any one of these Q5s or Q6s um, to try out yourself. Once you've downloaded it, just put it into the models slash unit folder. Next is to download the VAE and the text encoders. I got this from the Comfy UI tutorial site. You can put the VAE in the model slash VAE and then the text encoders in the text encoder folder. The last thing you need is the Flux Turbo Alpha LoRa. This will speed up generation so that you can only do it in eight steps. Go to the Hugging Face page and then download the Diffusion PyTorch model file and save it into your LoRa's folder. Now that we have the models, we can come back to Comfy UI. I'll go through each of the nodes and explain how they are set up. The first ones are the load models nodes. The default comes with a load diffusion model, but since we're using a GGUF, I've added a GGUF loader. Make sure you have these installed in your Comfy UI installation. From here, you select the model that you're looking for. So for me, it's the Q6. And then the next ones are the dual clip loader. Here you put your clips, put your clip and your text encoders in here, and then change, make sure you're on the flux, and then your device should be either CPU or default. If your CPU can run the, the text models, it's easier to offload onto the CPU. And then the last one is the VAE. Just put the VAE that you downloaded and selected here. The next part will be the speed up. These are useful for low end GPUs to help make the generations a little bit faster. They are using custom nodes uh, from KJ. So make sure you either download them or you can also disable them and bypass them if you, if you don't want to use them. The last one is the LoRa. Make sure you have the LoRa node and then select the Turbo Alpha that you downloaded. Set that strength to one. Down here we have conditioning. These are just for the prompts. Most of it is just to feed into the K sampler, which we'll get into later. Just leave these as default. Here we have the load image nodes. One of them is enabled by default just for your regular editing purposes. The second one is there bypassed, but you can enable it to feed in two different reference images to context to work on. These will be stitched together and then put into a one canvas size of 1024 by 1024. The size is important for eight gig VRAM users. Anything bigger will make it slower to generate or use up more RAM. So make sure you have this set properly. Then these feed into the context image scaler, which just uses a, a resolution that's good enough for context. The next part is the prompt. This is where you add your prompts. Keep it simple. Um, most of the examples I'll show later, you'll see that the changes are quite simple. Um, the language is quite simple and just keep it in a sentence structure. Next, everything is feeding into the case sampler. You can change steps to eight to make it easier to generate since you're using the Turbo Alpha LoRa. CFG you leave at one, Sampler name you can leave at Euler, scheduler simple, and then leave the denoise at one. This will feed into the VAE decode, and then finally onto your final saved image. Okay, now let's go over some of the review images and prompts. First one we have here is change the car color to shiny metallic gold. Change the background to a luxurious villa and fountain. So we see the car has changed colors, stayed in the same place, and the background has changed as well. Looks like it's done a pretty good job on this one. For the next one, we have change the style to Studio Ghibli anime while maintaining the same subject and composition. So this one's doing a style transfer uh, from a photorealistic to Studio Ghibli. This one seems to have worked well as well. It kept all her armor details, trimming, uh, the cape, the composition, everything pretty much aligned with the original photo. Another style change, this one for the scene of Dune, change Studio Ghibli style keep, while keeping the subjects, details, and composition exactly the same. You see the sentence structure I'm trying to use here is quite simple. You make a change first, and then you specify which ones that you want to keep the same. And that's kind of the same style that you use all the time for flux context. 
So this one, you see, keeps the, the man and the woman, uh, all their clothing the same, all the little details on the clothing, pretty much the same, and even the background as well. So uh, the style changes work pretty well. For the next one, we have um, not a style change, but adding elements to the, to the initial shot. This one has changed the background to a snow-colored glacier, add snow to the heads and shoulders of the man and woman, while keeping the subject's faces and clothes the same. So very similar prompt, um, so very similar prompt style, changing, adding what we want to change, and then afterwards specifying what we want to keep the same. So it's added all the different um, background elements and the snow on top of their clothes and hair. Um, pretty realistic for the most part, other than all the snow that's kind of stuck on their head. Um, but yeah, not not a bad uh, edit as well. Another one with a style change or adding elements to the clothes. Remove the red cape, add a white fur coat, change the armor to white, change the background to a snow covered field, keep the woman in armor in the exact same position and pose. So this one, you can see the, the background on the battlefield has changed to a snow covered one. Um, it's, it's cleaned up her face a little bit, uh, but generally kept it the same shape. And then the armor obviously has changed to white like it was specified. So pretty good on this one as well. Um, I mean, it could have done some other things like changed the, the cape itself and, and moved, removed it and added a cloak instead. But so it looks like there's some, some things that it still doesn't quite understand or you need better prompting to get to. Here we have another one. This time it's a change in a setting and making the character do something else. So it's more like a reference character and then having it um, put into a scene that you're creating. So this one is change the setting to a restaurant. The plush toy is eating spaghetti. Um, so it has taken the reference image, put it inside a restaurant with a plate of spaghetti. Uh, it, it hasn't really changed the mouth or made it more realistic in eating, but it seems to have understood what, it what we were asking for um, and put in most of the elements in there as well. This one is a test for colorization of black and white photos. Um, so this one has changed this to a lightly colored photo of an Eiffel Tower being built. Keep the subject, composition, shading details, and textures exactly the same. And this one here, you can see the initial photo. Um, what I wanted to do was keep all the different shading, line art, texture, all of that old vintage photo style, but just add a little bit of color to it. So instead of making it look more modern, uh, I did mention it was lightly colored. So just adding enough color to make it believable, but still looking old. Um, and it's done a pretty good job here. I'm not sure if you adding the, the subject name helps it and understand what it's trying to color in, but um, I think it doesn't really help. Uh, it doesn't really hurt to, to do that. And now I can show you a couple of examples where it didn't really follow along. I'm not sure if it's because uh, the GGuff version I'm using or, you know, some of the, the Turbo Alpha Laura that I'm using, but here we have an example of trying to color in and changing the text of, of a comic panel. Uh, this one is add minimal color to the manga panel of Luffy from One Piece. Keep line art and shading textures exactly the same. Replace King of the Pirates text with a Netflix show in the same typography style. So it's done a couple of things pretty well. It's changed the text in the same style as it was before, but it didn't get the spelling right. And I'm not sure if this is just not enough steps for the, for the model to work on. Um, and it's also added, you know, color to the face and his hat. It didn't quite understand, I think, the shirt, uh, the black shirt. So maybe it needs a bigger picture to figure out how to color it in. But for the most part, it's done what it's needed to do. It's just that the text uh, has messed up. Maybe that will improve if, you, if you've made it 20 steps without the Turbo Alpha Laura. Another test I did here to try with uh, two reference images uh, merged into one whole image. Uh, add a woman in black and the red car to an outdoor driveway in front of a villa. The woman is standing beside the car. So these were the two reference images given. Um, it did put them together in the same scene, but there's some issues with the, the woman, obviously. The scale looks off. She's very big compared to the car. Um, but I'm not really sure what's going on there. It looks like a lot of people are having this issue too with uh, context. Maybe uh, as people figure it out, and try this one again. And then another one, like a scene change using a reference image. Change the setting to a modern coffee shop. The woman in black is sitting at the table. 
with a coffee, keep the woman's facial shape and facial features the same. So I was trying to keep the, the face the same while changing the scene. Um, it kind of did that, but it, the, the face seems to have picked up kind of like the, the default flux image generation face. Um, so this one again needs a little bit more prompting and maybe more testing to, to figure out how to do this one. So that's the end of the video. Hopefully that was helpful. Give it a like, uh, subscribe if you're you know, want more tutorials or waiting to see more tutorials on anything stable diffusion that I have coming up. Uh, and until next time, catch you in the next one.